Hi everyone, I appreciate you taking some time to watch today's video. In today's video, I wanted to go over like a top 10 tools and accessories that you'll need when fishing. So this just applies to fishing as a whole. There's one, maybe two items on here that probably, you know, could be hit or miss if you're bank fishing, fishing from the shoreline. But otherwise, everything here would go across the board whenever you're doing some fishing. So appreciate you taking some time and let's hop right into it. So item number one, and this is one of those that could or could not go back and forth if you're actually fishing from the bank or from the boat. But number one, if you're definitely fishing from a boat, a net. A good deep net so that when you uh, catch those big fish, you can scoop them under and not have any issues trying to you know, boat flip or wrestle them into the boat, trying to, you know, reach down on the edge of the boat, keeps your fingers away from hooks and things like that, helps out a lot. So a good deep, deep net would really aid in one of those top accessories. All right, number two, and this one really comes in handy, especially when you're deep fishing. And even if you're on the bank, a smaller version of this would really be beneficial because it would benefit you in preventing you from losing baits. And so that is a lure knocker of some sort or a lure retriever. Uh, this one is designed more so for Alabama rigs and I have a couple others too that I utilize on the boat. But you need a good lure retriever so that whenever you do hang up, because you will, um, you can somehow knock your bait free. So, you know, this one's not really tied up right now, but typically you'll have a, a long piece of line. Uh, in the past, I've actually used older bait caster reels, lined them with a pretty good strong braid, and then tie it up. That way you can actually reel your lure retriever up and set it down in the you know base of the boat or something like that. And then likewise, if you're on the bank, one of the smaller like pocket rocket type versions, um, you know, like a two or three ounce sinker with some wire around it, and you can just drop it on your line and it'll free up your bait. So definitely want to always keep a lure retriever with you at all times because that is definitely going to save you a lot of money uh, as you go through your fishing adventures. <clears throat> Number three, this one applies to everyone and is super important, is a good set of pliers. You know, needle nose is my preferred ones, which I think most people typically do use needle nose, but you know, um, I would honestly recommend needle nose if at all possible for you. The reason being is if that bait gets lodged down deep in the fish's mouth, you can get it out typically a whole lot easier with needle nose than you can uh, just short uh, stockier uh, set of pliers. So a really good set of needle nose to be able to reach way down deep into that fish's mouth and be able to pull it out. That really helps a lot. I've uh, been multiple times where I've had that exact case in point where you just cannot seem to get to a crankbait, you can't get to a jerkbait, you know, even the swim baits. If you're throwing a big soft bait, sometimes you do have to have a little bit of help. Uh, and then I use it a lot with the glide baits where it will swipe along the fish and you'll just, it just gets in a weird piece of their mouth and honestly the pliers are a whole lot easier to get it out than trying to use your fingers. So that's just some advice there with pliers. Definitely utilizing pliers helps. All right, number four, a light. And not necessarily just a headlamp, but a light of some sort. This could even be the light off your phone, um, a flashlight, anything like that. You know, during the tournaments, when you go out early in the morning, you know, you need a light, something to be able to finish making sure that you're digging in a rod locker, uh, getting some stuff put together, whether you're tying a bait on or anything like that, having a light helps so much, especially if you're night fishing too. Being able to, uh, you know, tie your baits on, get fish off, put them in the live well. You know, if you've got to, if you end up having problems on the boat, you definitely need a light to be able to see exactly what you're looking for and where to help fix the problem. So a light would definitely be the number four on the list. <clears throat> Number five, this is one of my favorites, a scale. You need a scale of some sort, in my opinion. And the reason I say that is, you know, when you catch your personal best and you catch this really big fish, you don't want to say, well, 
I think it was seven pounds. I think it was 10 pounds. A scale will take all of the guesswork out of it and you can't have any doubters with it. Uh, yeah, I know that you can kind of, you know, you could probably forge with it a little bit here and there, but in general, a good working scale is something that would be really useful to have. Um, you know, this is the Rapala, I think it's the tournament scale, but any scale will work. You just want a good functional scale that will help you keep track of what your bass weigh. This also helps you when you're culling fish during a tournament because you can have, you can save up to about five entries on this particular scale. Um, several other scales on the market, but just a good operating scale to help you actually know how much your fish weigh. <clears throat> Number six, and you know, this is another one, but a good way to measure your fish. You know, um, this is one of the big bass boards that Working Class Zero came up with. I also have like the golden, the gold, measuring board or the golden rule measuring board uh, for tournaments and things like that. You need a good measuring board to be able to know what your fish are. And then if you go trophy fishing and you actually want to get a mount done of the fish, but you don't want to have to kill the fish and you want to get like a cast mount, you can take on their, your measuring board, have their full length, and then you can have another small tape measure to get their girth. Uh, two simple little uh, items to have, but a good measuring board so you can also say, okay, well, it's 22 inches long. Okay, exact, exactly 22 and a half, or it was about 20 inches. It's kind of the same thought process going behind the scale. You have an exact measurement that you can't really be argued with, but it helps you out a lot. And then you'll have to have that too if you're trying to measure short fish and know if, well, this fish is under the mark or it's right at the mark. Uh, as to whether or not that fish can actually make it into the tournament or not. And that even goes for like your kayak uh, fishermen. Uh, I know for those tournaments it's actually based on length versus weight. So having a good way to measure length of fish is a key, key asset that you have to have. <clears throat> All right. Next up on the list is snips. Scissors snips, toenail clippers, whatever you want to call them, some way to cut line. The best one that I found actually is toenail clippers. I also carry a set of scissors on the boat. Um, I personally like scissors really well, um, but these are really handy, especially if you're kind of going on somebody else's boat. It's a whole lot easier to kind of carry something this size in your pocket and then just clip your line, put it back in your pocket and so on and so forth. Uh, but you need something really quick and handy to be able to cut line, trim it off, and then just be able to go right back to casting and fishing. So uh, that would be my, my key one for that, is just having some sort of cutting tool, including a knife. Uh, it, I can't stress that enough as to how useful just a regular pocket knife is. You just never know when you might need it. Uh, so that would be that tool. All right, so number eight, a good set of split ring pliers. So when you're on the boat, when you're on the bank, it doesn't matter if you get a fish that, you know, bends out a hook, doles a hook, whatever, having a good set of split ring pliers that you can take with you on the boat, on the shore with you in the backpack, just something to be able to change out hooks with pretty quickly. And I really like that particular set of, uh, split ring pliers, that's the Texas Tackle version. I think it's like their medium split ring plier. It's the yellow handle, but um, it's a really good set. I've not had any issues with it and I've had it for several years and I've been using them for the big swim bait uh, split rings. So, you know, size three and up uh, and they're, they're still going strong, but a good set of split ring pliers will really help you out. And, you know, there's even several sets out there that um, they have a split ring plier plus pliers, you know, so you can get a different set. It doesn't necessarily just have to be solely split ring pliers. All right, so next two items are gonna be two that I personally like really well, but this next set to me, number nine is one of the most key items that you have on the boat year round. That's a set of sunglasses. Highly, highly 
recommend everyone have a really good set of sunglasses. And in, I mean, specifically speaking, I would recommend a set of polarized lenses. So, you know, I do a lot of swim bait fishing, particularly glide bait fishing. Uh, I love to throw glide bait and glide baits, as everyone knows, is notorious to get followers. Well, when you're looking in that water and you have all this reflection coming back into your eyes, you have hard times differentiating between shadow, the glare on the water, and then trying to see through the water to see your bait. So the best recommendation that I could possibly have is getting a good set of polarized lens sunglasses to be able to cut that reflection. Now, definitely you can go down the rabbit hole with this and go into like the very very high dollar sunglasses you could stay on the more budget friendly end of just really good polarized lenses so we won't kind of dive down that rabbit hole uh, everyone i'm sure has their own personal preferences as far as sunglasses go but i would highly recommend if you don't already use them using polarized lenses to be able to cut that glare on the water and that goes for bank or on you know, on the boat, you're gonna get glare off that water and this cuts that glare down. Now, as far as lens color, now that's gonna be a personal preference. Um, a lot of people that I know really enjoy like the black or gray lenses. Um, I like those really well, but now for me personally, when I go out fishing, I wear amber. I wear an amber lens 99% of the time. And the other 1% is because I don't for whatever reason, I've ran off and left my amber lenses. So I may opt into like, um, you know, a gray lens. I've experimented a little bit with some of the mirror frames. So like it would be uh, like a green mirror on there or a blue mirror. Um, I can't really tell you enough. I don't have enough experience on that as to if I would say that I, I can see that that actually makes a big difference over an amber lens, um, so I, I can't really give you my much of my opinion on that. I've tried it, but I can't tell you that it's helped me a great deal. Um, so for me personally, I stick with the amber lenses 99% of the time. All right, so we've reached our final one. Today's is going to be a short video. Number 10, and this is going to be more applicable to wintertime fishing motorcycle helmet <clears throat> and this applies more so to winter fishing in a boat but when the when blast off happens and it's time to run at you know 50 60 70 miles per hour in a bass boat in a convertible you know and at 30 degrees in the morning a motorcycle helmet will pay off its weight in gold when you end up coming off the water that day because here you are you know you don't have all the wind burn and your eyes aren't bloodshot from having to uh, try to <laughs> squint to see and you don't have these giant tear lines rolling down your eyes where you froze yourself half to death uh, trying to get to your first spot. So last but certainly not least would be a motorcycle helmet. It really does pay off. Uh, I've got that one. I've had it now for a couple of years. Um, it works great and honestly it's the only way that I, I can make it when you're doing a blast off at daylight and it's, you know, 20 some degrees in the morning, uh, definitely below freezing. So, but hey, appreciate everyone taking some time to watch today's video. This is another one of those bonus videos. I told you I was going to try to start adding in. Uh, if anyone has any uh, comments, thoughts, please leave them down below. Also, if you have any ideas for additional bonus videos, please feel free to uh, put those down in the comments and I'll try to get to them as we can. Really appreciate everyone taking some time watching. Please leave me a thumbs up if you've enjoyed today's video. Hit the little subscribe button down below. That lets you know that we've got extra videos coming out and it gives you a little bit of a notification when new videos are coming up. But appreciate everyone talking and I'll see you in the next video.